Hello people, welcome to my channel, I'm Tom Heats and today we are going to talk about different blockchain types that exist out there. So the blockchain technology is one of the most popular and greatest inventions after the internet. And there are mainly three groups of blockchains that exist. So there is the public blockchain, the private and the consortium blockchain. And in between there are different mixed forms of blockchains like public permissioned and private permissioned but if you're interested in this I'm going to make a separate video about those mixed types. So let's start with the public blockchain. That th th um, This type of blockchain is, yeah, as the name suggests, public. This means that everyone is free to join the network and nobody is really responsible here and everybody can participate in reading, writing, and verifying the blockchain. And also another characteristic of this type of blockchain is that they are open and transparent. This allows any person within the network to verify a certain point in time in the public blockchain record. And as mentioned before, no particular person or group is responsible for controlling the public blockchain and therefore Decision-making and verification of transactions is achieved through various consensus mechanisms such as, such as proof of work or proof of stake. Um, let's look at some examples of public blockchains. We have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, IOTA and Cardano. But as you know, there are many out there which I didn't cover here. Um, yeah, I, I, I would also think that this is the most popular one and also the de most decentralized one but i will go over that uh anytime soon so which activities activities does the public blockchain cover so mainly there are free activities which the public blockchain allows us it's generating coins or tokens by mining or staking and operating a node in a network to send and receive transactions and to check the block in a, for example, in a blockchain explorer. Next we have, sorry, next we have the private blockchain and the private blockchain is only available to a certain group in contrast to the public blockchain. There is no, there's one or more persons uh, responsible for maintaining the blockchain. They also Determine, determine, for example, who carries out which actions and who has access to certain data in the blockchain. And here a uh, consensus is reached on the coordination of the central responsible persons who can grant or withdraw mining rights for users within the network if you're using a proof of work, for example. In this way, the private blockchain is more centralized, but it's still crypto cryptographically secure. So you're, so you're not losing out of security here. And the aspect of centralization makes it generally controversial whether this variant can actually be called a blockchain since it contradicts the basic idea of Bitcoin which first made the blockchain public. But technically speaking, the private variant is also a blockchain. And let's look at some examples of the private blockchain. Uh, we have Ripple, Hyperledger and Corda. Also here, there may exist some more, but here I've listed three examples of private blockchains. And yeah, you may ask, where do private blockchains fit in? What's their use case? So private blockchain is well suited for implementation in companies because these companies do, do not want to make their data freely accessible to everyone. The benefit from the efficiency of the blockchain while retaining control over the insight of the internal uh, company activities. And a public blockchain would be unsuitable for a company since the competition could theoretically also gain insight into the private business. In addition, the management can better select which employee with, within the network is authorized to perform a specific task. And 
last but not least we have consortium blockchains and this blockchain type is an extension of the private blockchain it attempts to remove the sole autonomy of the private blockchain and this means that more than one person or company is responsible for the network basically there is a group of companies or rep representatives persons who come together and make decisions sorry for that and they make decisions for the best use of the whole network such groups are also called consortia or federations from where the name can be derived and the functioning of a federated blockchain or consortium, consortium blockchain can be explained by the following example a consortium consists of 20 for example 20 financial institutions which have defined in a code that a transaction a block or a decision within the network can only be assumed to be true if for example, more than 15 of the participating institu institutions confirm it. And in this way, a consensus is reached within a consortium. And of course, this allows a fast processing of transactions as known from the blockchain with, without having to rely on the decision of an individual, as it's the case with the private blockchain. And furthermore, voting within a consortium block prevents wrong decisions of fraudulent activities by individual participants. Um, since a defined majority decision must be present. And here we have, for example, R3, EWF, B3I, and also the Facebook Libre Association is also a, an example of a consortium blockchain. And let's go to our conclusion. Let's summarize what we have heard. So the, the public blockchain, private blockchain and stuff like that is comparable with the internet and internet. And the yeah, private or federated blockchains are indispensable for companies and close groups that need to limit the activities in the network to a certain group of people. They offer the efficiency and transparency of blockchain technology in a protected environment that cannot be seen by outsiders. And the public blockchain, on the other hand, is intended more for use by individuals. They retain control over their personal data and can process transactions of various data or funds. Um, yeah, and they can process this quickly and cost effectively without being dependent on a central authority. Um, and you have to keep in mind that most of the time, I have to say most of the time, it's currently that centralized or more centralized blockchains like Ripple are very fast because they are private and not, not open source. And a, a very big advantage of open source blockchains, of, of public blockchains, is that everyone can uh, comp contribute to the code and also you know go over the cryptography check if if there are vulnerab vulnerabilities or something so it's i would um such uh, yeah i would consider it uh, more secure though um that public blockchains are more secure than private ones and of course if you need uh yeah, if you are a company, you want you probably want to have a private blockchain because otherwise you lose the competitive uh, advantage if you just publish your your secret recipe for such a, a blockchain. So, and also for governments, um, I don't think that governments will build blockchain solutions um, with public blockchains. I guess they will uh, probably use private ones or consortium ones. Um, yeah, it's always a question of use case when to use which one. So this was it. This was the, a general overview of the different blockchain types. If you want to hear some yeah 
some advanced uh, information about uh, permission, pr public permissioned or private permission blockchains, let me know that in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I'd be glad if you subscribe. And see you next time.